Hello, in this Ryu Jinx tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set well Ryu Jinx up on your Mac. And this works for the Intel based Macs, and this also works for the Apple based Macs, the Apple Silicon based Macs as well. Recommend you know doing it on those ones if you have the option to do it, because the performance is fantastic. So, we can play Nintendo Switch games on our Mac now. So, a lot has you know really changed over the last year or two, especially with everything that's gone on with the Apple Silicon Macs. There's a lot more stuff that's compatible like Nintendo Switch games via applications like Ryu Jinx, PlayStation 3 games via software like RPCS3. You know, I'm digressing, so let me just get to, you know, the main part of this video. So, first of all, I want to say this video does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes only. Legally speaking, I recommend that you own a Nintendo Switch you own the game that you're trying, etc, etc. Okay, so first of all, what you need to do is go ahead and download the Nintendo Switch firmware. I've got it already downloaded. Just go to this website, DarthSterny.net. I'll provide a link in the description so you don't need to you know, start Googling it. And, you know, just click download. I recommend the mega link. Click it. And then you'll have the option to click download again. Click download. This will start downloading in here, and then you can download it. Okay, so I've already got it downloaded, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to ignore that. The next thing that you need is reujinx.org. Click download. Go to macOS. And that's it. I've already, again, already got it downloaded, so I'm going to cancel it. The final thing you need is the prod keys, which, is, which you'll need for the games. I won't be providing that for legal purposes, but if you literally just Google prod.keys, Nintendo Switch download, you'll find it online. Also, in general, if you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord group. There's a link in the description, so feel free to check that out as well. Now that we've got all of that downloaded, let's set up the emulator. It's really easy to do. First of all, I'm going to extract Ryu Jinx. Now, just move that onto the application folder that's installed now so you could you know launch it like this or you can launch it from the i can't remember what that launch is called and when you do this but i'll just search for it like this command space and here we go so you'll give us an error first or a problem this is saying it can't be open just because you need to let your computer know okay this this application fine and that you trust it to do that you go to your apple icon Go to system preferences, security and privacy, and here I just click open anyway. Click open. This is a one time thing. Uh, if you do uninstall, you will need to redo it, but other than that, it is one time. So you need the prod.keys to get them, or you know, I've already got them. Obviously, like I said, feel free to Google them. You can rip them yourselves as well. To install them, go to file, open reuse folder, and mine, I'm just gonna open a new tab. Mine are keys. We only need the product keys for Reujinx and go to system, paste it here. That's that done. If I close Reujinx down, reopen it, you'll see that we don't get that same error anymore. Okay, so we're all done with that. Next, we need to install the system version. To do that, go to tools, install firmware, and because we've got it as a zip file, select that. Find our zip file, which for me is in, on the desktop. And do, do I want to continue? Yes, that's fine. It's it's very fast to install it. So if it's not, it's taking ages, then something's probably gone wrong. Reclose, I mean, close Reujinx, reopen it, retry it, uninstall Reujinx, you know, try, try that. Uh, and if not, feel free to just message on the Discord group or in the comments if you have any problems. Now we're set up. So we can go to options. We can go to settings. And... And in here, the main one that we're going to be going with here in the first section is game directories and click add. And my game is on the desktop. So I'm going to select desktop, but I recommend that you have a more sort of permanent game directory and like called games or something. And if I click so as you know, it's a bit difficult for me to see. So if I just press that let me just draw yeah so just to resize it and you can scroll as well but we need this part click apply as you can see the game has now appeared that was on the desktop which was new super mario bros deluxe no new super mario u 
Deluxe. Okay, so in input, feel free to set the controls however you want to do it. Press a key. Let's say if I press U, it's now that input. I'm going to change it back to F. And yeah, that's it. You can connect different controllers up. You can actually connect Joy-Con controllers. You can connect PS4, PS5, Xbox controllers. I'll have separate videos covering all that. There's a few little slight differences depending on which controller you are setting up. So feel free to check them out. You can set it for different players. You can use different input devices, what I was just referring to. Click refresh, you know, if you need to, if you've disconnected a device and it's not appearing. And you can change the controller type. Recommend Joy Compare because that's the most commonly uh, used one in games. And for the profile, you can save a profile. And the benefit of this, you know, with different names, is you could have a different control scheme for different games, different genres, and different people, so which is fantastic. Keyboard hotkeys, feel free to take a look at them. Really useful, but otherwise, nothing else to see there for system. I recommend you select the correct region and time and everything just for, for me it's G and G, 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 G. Well, let me redo that because the yeah. So just just click and press the arrow keys to get it. And so I'm in UK, so I'll need the London one, the GMT. GMT is a bunch of them. It doesn't really matter which one. This is useful because some games do require you to have you know date and time set properly, otherwise they don't work. So recommend that you get that done cpu you can leave this as is graphics you can leave this as is unless you know what you're doing feel free to increase the resolution scale but as always i recommend doing it on the native setting the lowest setting and if that works up it if that works up here and go from there feel free to you know increase the anisotropic filtering uh, but again same thing just increase it as you you know are confident that the game works well leave you on auto otherwise these tropic filtering a lot of you just basically uh, at obscure angles some of the textures can become distorted or blurry this fixes that issue aspect ratio just leave you at 16 by 9 and for the graphics back end just put it on auto for audio make sure you got something selected i've got sdl2 by default that's fine networking i might create a separate video covering this in a separate you know separately and let me just resize this up and apply save other than that we're ready to launch what you can do is right click you can open the save directory delete that sort of stuff manage your transfer files you can manage title updates so if there are any updates you can click the add button to manually add it then for dlc and cheats other than that we can double click and just wait patiently and your game will load Here we go. Okay, so if you want to go full screen, you can click this, but I recommend you go to full toggle full screen here. You can start gaming full screen by default. By toggling full screen, it goes full screen and gets rid of this bar as well. So I need to press left and right, which is map to E and U from where I remember. There we go. And you can use the mouse as a input for the touch screen. So I can just do that. And you can turn the volume down here. You can turn off VSync, but if the game is sort of tied in with frame rate, then you'll get issues where you just either speeds up too much or it goes too slow as it is like so. You can change the ratio, but I recommend that you leave it at the 16 by 9. Feel free to you know change the volume here. Other than that, there's nothing else to change except for the dot. And let me show you why you might want to go from docked to handheld to docked. The reason being is if we open up a new window and go to Ryu Jinx. I'm going to lower the volume. Go to compatibility. So this is very important to check, you know, if your game you know works. So if I put in New Super Mario, which is the game that I'm playing. 
for you to find it here. That's it right there. So yeah, the status of playable, which is good. And buddy, what it will do is tell you any information that is required or helpful to make sure you get the best experience. So you know, if you have any issues, feel free to check this out. It's this one's got it. Um, there's a bunch of comments as well. So they're playing it on handheld a lot. So I would just recommend you play on handheld. Sometimes the game works on docked or, or handheld and doesn't work on the other version. Recommend that you check this out. And other than that, that's it. Like I said, I'll put it onto handheld, which is what they were doing. can't remember the controls i literally can't remember the controls there have been mapped so i'll leave it at that so that's it that's how you set up ryu jinx on your mac super simple if you have any questions feel free to join the discord group link in the description also feel free to just post in the comments if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one bye bye